What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about UI table view diffable data source. So this has been something that a lot of you have been requesting. It's fairly modern and kind of newish. So I figured it's time we finally go over it. So what is a diffable data source? It's basically a way uh, for you to supply an object to either a table view, and this is also applicable to collection views, in where the data source can automatically diff the models and the data that you want to present, and it can animate and update your data and your UI for you. So here's a developer documentation page for it. I'll link this down below. We're not going to read it. We're going to write some code and be cool about it. And here's an example of what we're going to build. We've got a table view here, and I've got an obnoxiously large uh, action sheet. And we select one of these. We actually don't call reload data, but we've got a diffable data source going on behind the scenes here. And it actually automatically is able to create this concept of a snapshot and apply the changes and update the UI with a pretty slick animation. So all that said, make sure you absolutely destroyed that like button as per usual, helps out video engagement. If you've been following along, hit subscribe while you're at it for daily uploads, keeps the channel going and growing. Get XCO ready, get excited. Let's get into some diffable data source. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template and let's go ahead and call this diffable data source. Make sure your language is Swift, interface is storyboard and lifecycle UI kit. Go ahead and continue. We'll save it to our desktop. And first things first, let's expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work with. And we're gonna be working primarily in the view controller here. So let's come in here, bump up the font size. Let's also pick a simulator while we're at it, hit that run button and you should be greeted with an empty app just like this. So diffable data sources. So the idea behind a diffable data source, as I mentioned in the beginning, is a object that can diff the models that you are supplying to a table view and update it automatically via this thing called a snapshot. So all of it will be done through code. We're gonna create our models. But before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to create a plus button in the top right of our screen. And every time we select it, we'll show a sheet from which we can select an item to insert into our table view. So let's go ahead and just jump into the main.storyboard for a quick second, select your controller and just embed it in a navigation controller via the editor option up here embed in navigation controller. And that's the extent we'll be in there. And let's jump back to our view controller. So before we actually look at the diffable data source, we need to create a table view to apply that data source to. So let's just come in here and with an anonymous closure pattern, let's create a table view like so. So we're gonna create it, we're gonna return it, and we're gonna make sure we register a cell to it, which is going to be a table view cell dot self for the identifier of self. We are also going to say the delegate is self. Make sure you don't assign the data source there, just the delegate, since the data source will be another object. The next thing we're going to want is the actual declaration of the data source. So we're going to say var data source. And this is actually gonna be just the type here. So this is gonna be a UI table view data source. And if you notice, if you try to create it like this, you're gonna get an error. Uh, or if you don't get an error, when you try to implement it, you'll get an error. And the reason is, is because this type is generic and it expects the type of a section and each model in that section in these brackets. So let's go ahead and create those models and we'll talk through them a little bit about how we created them. So first, we're going to create sections with an enum. And I'm just going to add one section in here. And we're going to create a model called fruit. It'll be hashable and have a title in it. And in the data source, we're going to say each section will be a section. And each section will have a fruit in it, just like that. Let's see, cannot specify non-generic type. Let's see why it's complaining. This is supposed to be UI table view diffable data source, not just the normal data source. And now you'll see everything will look correct. And actually, if you get rid of these, now you might actually see the error that I was talking about just a moment ago, just like that. So let's talk about these models. 
So the idea with a diffable data source is we need to provide models that the data source can internally diff, in other words, figure out differences for, and based on the difference, it can animate and update your table view automatically. So to create a diff, your models need to be hashable. In other words, they need to have a hash associated with it, so um, the table view under the hood can compute the differences. Generally, sections are best represented as enums because enums are hashable by default, and models are best represented by a struct uh, marked with uh, hashable to conform to that protocol. So let's stick with this and move forward. Now that we declared it up there, let's go ahead and actually create it here. But before we do that, we want to make sure we don't forget to add the table view as a sub view and that we don't forget to give this guy a frame. And let's assign that data source. So this is going to be a UI table view diffable data source. Uh, and open up that constructor here and you'll see there's only one initializer. First parameter is a table view to apply it to. And the next thing is a cell provider, which is a closure that takes the table view, an index path, and the actual model that you supplied in the generic declaration right up here. And if you look at it, it looks awfully familiar. This looks a lot like the function cell for row at index path. And in fact, it actually functions exactly the same. So here we're gonna say table view, we're gonna dequeue a reusable cell with the given identifier, assuming I can spell it correctly, just like that. The ID is cell that we registered and for index path, and that index path is coming from the closure parameters. And what's also unique about this closure is that it passes in the model for the given position based on what we specified as the type. So here we're going to say cell.textLabel and all I'm gonna do here is assign the text to be model.title. And title is this thing right here in our fruit. So fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and hit command R and let's, let's make sure we're building and we should see our app running here with an empty table view. Hopefully, cool, looking good. So we can see there's a table by the cell separators are a little subtle, but they're definitely there. So let's go ahead and start looking at what snapshots are. Let's add a plus button up here and let's start adding in some rows. So adding a plus button is fairly simple. Let me just give this a title of, let's call it my fruits. And let's add that plus button, which is a right bar button item. So it's gonna be a UI bar button item with an image and a style. The image is gonna be a system image of plus, style we can stick with done, target self, and the action here, I'm gonna go ahead and say did tap add. We're gonna create this function, annotated objective C since it's a selector. And let's leave this empty for just a moment. We're gonna need an array that's gonna hold fruits. And that's what we're gonna to use to tell the data source to update itself. So let me call this fruits, and this is gonna be a array of fruit models. And when we tap on that plus button, what we wanna do is we wanna show an action sheet. And it's gonna be a alert controller with a title of select fruit message of nil. And the style is gonna be an action sheet here. Preferred style will be an action sheet just like that. And then we're gonna present the action sheet. Now, of course, in your actual app, you wouldn't use an action sheet, you would use your actual data. But just for the sake of this example here, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to add a cancel action first. So this is gonna be a UI alert action with a title of cancel cancel and nil. And I'm gonna create a for loop here. So we're gonna say for X and zero to let's do a hundred. And every time we're gonna add in a new uh, action and instead of it being cancel, it's going to be fruit X plus one style will be default and the handler instead of it being nil, we're gonna actually do something in here. Make sure you do weak self so you don't create a retain cycle. And what we're basically gonna do in here is we are going to first create a fruit 
and this will be fruit with a name, sorry, with a title, which will be fruit x plus one. We are going to append it to the models array, which is called fruits, just like that. And then we're gonna tell the data source to update. So I'm gonna say update data source. And we haven't created this function yet, so no need to panic. So let's create this function. And this is where we need to create a snapshot and apply it to the table. And the snapshot is what the table view, rather the data source can use to update the table view automatically. So here I'm gonna say a snapshot is a UI, rather instead of UI, NS, diffable data source snapshot. And this is again generic. So we're gonna say it takes a section and a fruit type. And on the snapshot, we want to append a section and the items. So sections is fairly simple. We only have one. And the next thing we want to append is the item, items, plural, and that's going to be our fruits, which is an array of those fruit models. And then we can say on the data source, we can apply a snapshot. And do we want to animate the differences? Yes, because we're cool. Are we going to add a completion? No, because we're lazy. So before we review this code, let's go ahead and just hit Command R and let's see this in action. More importantly, let's see if I broke anything. So we have a plus button, we've got a title. We hit this, we should see a super long list pop up here. So let's go with fruit one. All right, there's fruit one, it animated in, pretty cool. Fruit two, fruit three, so on and so forth. I can sit and go through this whole list. So I, I'm gonna call out two really important things here. The first thing is that the model needs to be hashable and that hash is how it's gonna figure out if the data needs to change. Now there's an implicit thing that everyone gets confused on in here and that is you need to make sure that every single model is truly unique. So for example, we have fruit one, two, three, and 21 in here. Watch what happens when I hit fruit one again. All right, what happened there? Well, clearly the app crashed, but if we come into here, Let's take a look at what actually caused this to crash. So this is saying terminating app due to uncaught exception, NS internal inconsistency exception, fatal, supplied item identifiers are not unique. So it's, it's fairly straightforward, but let's, let's define this in English. So what this is saying is the table view data source tried to create a diff of adding that new snapshot, uh, rather applying the new snapshot that we're giving it down here what it's saying is it found a model with the same identifier, same hash as something it already has. So it's not able to compute if there's a difference. Now, why is it doing that? It's doing that because we're creating a hash based on just a title and a fruit. So if we try to add the same types of fruit multiple times, it's going to basically crash because it doesn't know if there's a difference. Generally, models are a little more intricate than one item, but the solution to this is basically implementing your own version of hashable, which is this uh, hash into hasher function and supplying unique values. So that's a really important distinction to call out of if you ever see crashes like that, that's actually what's going on. What you'll also wonder, be wondering rather, is how do you deal with uh, selecting a cell with this different type of data source? So the good news is uh, it's fairly simple and the even better news is it's actually identical to what you used to do before. So if we do did select row at index path, the first thing we're gonna do is deselect it. And you can actually get the item from the data source. So we can say let fruit is data source. And let's see, item identifier. So you can get the item identifier um, from the index path here, and notice it returns a fruit optional. So here you can just pass in the index path. And instead of actually taking the index path in this function here and checking in the array of you know, what was selected, which can be error prone sometimes, this is far simpler. And more so than being simpler, this is more uh, crash prone, rather crash resistant. So you're not gonna, you're not going to run into weird exceptions where index indexes are um, out of range or out of bounds. 
But let's just go ahead and print out fruit.title and let's just see this in action. In other words, now the data source is also responsible for pulling out the model for you, even though you're using the same function here, did select road index path, it makes your life slightly simpler. We can disregard these uh, constraint warnings in the console because it's complaining about my obnoxiously large action sheet here. Um, so we've got a few things in here. We clear this out with the command K. And if we select it, you'll notice we get the respective selection printed out just like that. And there you have it. That's how you can use a diffable data source. You can use it for both table views and collection views. It does simplify your code. No more data source, number of rows, number of sections. Uh, and the most, the most, the best thing about this, the most wonderful thing is if you're ever used to getting data and then doing something like table view reload data, you're not going to have to do this at all anymore. The beauty is just update the snapshot, apply it to the data source and the data source will do the reload for you. And it'll also do it with an animation with a simple Boolean value of true here. So that's basically all I've got for you guys today. So let me know down below, do you guys use difficult data source? If you have an older project, do you plan on migrating? I think it's pretty subjective if it's, if it's worth it or not, uh, of what benefits it brings to you. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'll call it out again, but this is only supported in iOS 13 and up, which is most uh, apps support minimum. So be uh, cognizant of that in case your app does support older versions. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already, helps out with video engagement quite a bit. Comment other feedback and video suggestions down below. Hit subscribe while you're at it for daily Swift uploads. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.